tricks. <laughs> and some tricks. I cannot do that with my notebook. Really? I have yeah. a notebook like all day. Look at that shit. Damn. Hey guys, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm gonna read some poetry, so if anybody's been like waiting to take a bathroom break or smoke a cigarette, it's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Someone is gonna text me a lot, probably. That's what happens when I bring my phone on stage. If you're told frequently enough how eloquently you express mourning, you will start to feel like a pain factory. Learn a new language. Speak it like a child forever. Kimmy Walker. Dear Sarah, I miss making out with you more than at least three of my dead family members. A river cuts through my town. If I close my eyes, it sounds just like your laugh. I would wade in with a pocket full of stones. I have a recurring dream where I am tied to a chair and men in suits are asking me if I still love you. I say yes over and over again and they beat me with a hose. I think this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I am still learning how to like anything about myself when I am sober. At your funeral, your sister sang the song from Titanic. I also thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I left a pack of cigarettes in your casket. I have a recurring dream where the men are asking me to describe your face. I can't. Thank you. That's my first quote. <laughs> also probably going to be like the only one I actually read out of this notebook. The rest are going to be from my phone because I'm <laughs> such, such a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Three love letters to dead people. One, you said, I love you, and let's get fucked up in a single breath. Two, I am sorry. Your mouth is a bruise on my body that still blooms like peacock feathers. My voice still shakes around your name. Somebody fucking call me. <laughs> uh, more of me than I will ever admit doesn't want that to go away. Three, when you dropped a nickel bag on the counter of the bodega, I laughed the same way I did when my dying grandmother called me gay. I will never not feel guilty that I got better and not you. Mm. Thank you. That was my second oh. <laughs> A haiku. When the zombies come, undead neighbors watch us fuck. Fantasy fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> that was a haiku. <laughs> by that poem. High school in four short stories. Freshman. I took a crash, crash course in parachuting Sarah's Ritalin behind the backstop of the baseball diamond. Slammed face first into the brick wall of her blue eyes. I still say she kissed first. Like Camaro with the brake lines cut, she still does not know I was named after someone who died in a car crash. Mm. Blame it on my manners. Mom said never talk with your mouth full. Sophomore. It makes me sound like a fuck-up to say I quit drinking at 16, so I quit AA instead. Doomsh. <laughs> <laughs> me and Ben break into parked cars and steal from bodegas. He has not yet become a lost cause, so I hold his hoodie while he lets a local blood break his nose. The rust-colored stain leaks all the way to his pants. Junior. I stay sober for six whole months before Emily unwraps my fingers from the 90-day chip and sucks the sunshine from my bottom lip. I don't remember much of that year. Senior. I drop out, and Ben is still in prison, still in prison. I sleep through the fall, and Ben is still in prison. I'm sober and quit smoking, and Ben is still in prison. I don't talk with my mouth full. I still don't speak up when she ashes on the hoodie. I don't sleep without the TV on. Ben is still in prison, and I'm locking myself in my room with all the lights on. I'm gonna do one of the things I actually bothered to memorize, which is like three. I go on tour sometimes. I should have more shit memorized. And have a set list. I should have a lot of things I don't have. I should have more than two of my poems in the notebook. 
thanks for having me. <laughs> Stop calling me. <laughs> August in New Buffalo tastes like an apology. My mother wear Wow, I fucked up to start with. <laughs> Someone's still calling me. Alright. August in New Buffalo smells like an apology. My mother wears her Sunday's best like a flag over a soldier's coffin. Legs crossed at the ankles over the one tattoo she couldn't find clothes to cover. Grandma Noel does not attend the service. Her whole body, now a special breed of cough. I remember the midnight we got the call he passed. The highway from Connecticut was endless before the dial tone. They tell me he'd have liked it if I had written his eulogy. Michigan shoved as hard as possible between the joints of my fingers when I spill a web of purple X's and scratch marks in my rainbow notebook. How well did we actually know each other? Why do I have so many words for mourn and so few for remember at the funeral? Your wedding photo still smelled like the 50s. All red paint and rounded edges. You loved her heavy as dying stars. The PA system croons. Have a little talk with Jesus like sinking dusk later. Tangled in her own whispering, Grandma Noel says she wishes she could have gone blind sooner. Says she regrets sunlight whenever she misses him. It was a vacuum in her stomach. My mother cries an asteroid shower. I will dream of gluing pieces of her back together like porcelain splintering on a tabletop. Arms spread wide like we can hold home forever in our lungs. She still gives the New Buffalo area code without thinking. Her skin is just Michigan by another name, South Carolina in the blood he gave us. But our clothes still smell like Connecticut when I pull into the funeral home. I close my eyes into solar eclipse when they read the words I wrote for him sometime. After Pennsylvania, but before Ohio, my grandfather's voice was our home. His molasses thick <coughs> rumble and working man's hands, Grandma Noel, has to sleep in their bed that night. Her hospital equipment open like an autopsy in the living room, she says, Evan, it's been so long since I slept next to him. I want his scent wrapped around my shoulders. The smell of cornbread and propane was our home. He was our home. He is another piece missing. I stare at my hands as they lower his body into the ground. Wrists exposed, my dress clothes never seem to fit me right. Tie undone and a wash in whisper my bare chest. A highway of scars I somehow never found the right way to show him. They now echo a fading goodbye like distant car crashes asleep on an air mattress somewhere I belong less every summer, but my mother, my mother holds on to it like the button of a collapsing puppet like this. This is the one thing that keeps us from falling apart. I don't know what I could possibly say to her to make this better. I will dream so hard of collecting her like leaves in autumn, it gives me a stomach ache. Grandma Noel buys us breakfast the next morning. Grits and cornbread, before we leave, she makes us promise we will not forget her. We assure her like sparrows. We come home. Thank you. Here's a fun fact about me. I'm a grown man, and I have a tattoo of Pikachu. Yeah. yeah. That's real. That's forever. <laughs> <laughs> Girls like that. They're super duper into it. <laughs> Oh, show me that children's cartoon on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, my ex-girlfriend really seriously considered never having sex with me again after I got it. Which is valid. I can't blame her. She said, I heard somewhere in Asia sail sailors? Railroad workers slept with their heads on the tracks operating under the assumption that the vibrations of an incoming train would wake them. I think loving you was a lot like that. Thank you. That was a poem. Mm. <laughs> I have another haiku. Voting is coming in a dumpster, but all of the trash is oppression. <laughs> <laughs> Death of one is a tragedy. 
The death of millions is just a statistic. Joseph Stalin. Hello, new person. How you feeling? Welcome to my set. How you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> the death of one is a tragedy. The death of millions is just a statistic. Joseph Stalin. One, in the moments immediately preceding the first time I kiss you, your hushed voice against the church bell bang of my heart like waves cresting over a sinking ship and lost in you. I do not hear the bomb drop. I do not feel fragments of my skull forced forward like a blush of cherry blossom petals. One, I was one of 156 this year. I was two of 312 eyes forced shut, the bomb dropped like a giant's tooth on my school bus. The heat of burnt diesel and patent explosives cast the shadow-seared scar of my small body long as a cedar oak across Pakistan's skin. One, I am becoming a man now. Nineteen, I am clenched fist, dry heat. I am a burning in my stomach, a war in each of my fingers. My heart is a shotgun shell tumbling after the bang. I am fist fight, first kiss, first day of a life swollen with wondering. An explosive charge melds me with the wreckage of my home. There is no body for my mother to bury millions. The controls are a beautiful animal. The twisted coil of a black snake lay dormant in my palms. I'm stationed in Wisconsin, but I am long gone. I become the flight. I am the spectral whites of American steel melting in a cloud. I've never seen a body up close, but I know death like the... I know the blank of a canvas screen better than I know my wife's face. I know the pop of an explosion on infrared better than anything. I only lose sleep over the ones I miss. Each wrapped skull I leave intact is an American life in danger is a strike on my soil waiting to happen. One, I was a doctor, a painter, a cashier, a teacher. I had eyes, lips, skin, teeth, a nose, a voice. I had a voice. The fires do not ask questions, just swallow. One, does my last breath haunt a general's mind just a little before he sleeps? One, what legislation was filed on the day they ordered the strike that killed my son? What zoning regulation was passed the day my nine-year-old was deemed a threat to national security? Mm -hmm. There is a strange silence in an explosion, the pop of an eardrum, the nameless vibrato of a mother's swan neck scream. Can this possibly be what it looks like on a computer screen? Does the person pulling the trigger ever ask themselves how much more a pound of flesh weighs than one of steel? Millions. As the snow falls in unbreaking waves over Connecticut, my brother gleefully kills foreign pixels on the family television screen. His face is a forgiveness. The snake lay dormant in his palms. My mother reads news stories that put numbers where bodies belong. We are told the program saves American lives. We are given no reason to believe anything else. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Whoops. I'm going to find my next poem, and while I do that, uh, I'm also going to apply... It's the, it's the only poem that I give um, a trigger warning to. It deals uh, a lot with uh, sexual trauma and uh, other like physical abuse. So if anyone feels like they will be uncomfortable with that, I really highly encourage you to take the space you need. I'll not be offended. You can talk to me after the show about it if you like. Um, this is also, side note about this poem, the first poem I ever got published. <laughs> Go me! Yes, you did. Fuck yeah. Uh, it's called Blood Makes the Blade Holy. Mom, I'll pay my brother's bail. Mom, you were the last good thing in Michigan. Mom, a grave can't stay freshly dug forever. Something will grow over it. Mom, something is growing. Mom, Poppy is asleep in front of the headstone. Again. And I cannot sleep here. Mom, the men in this house are crumbling to ash in my fingers. Mom, he got bad drugs. Mom, he stabbed himself in the stomach six times. Mom, six times.
times my brother, six times mom, six times the fish head gape of his gut like a mouth in awe is not a fear I can unlearn. The knife is still here. The window is still broken. The ghost is still here. Mom, I'm here too. Mom, I need you. Mom, I hate every inch of me. This me. Mom, ash spreads. Mom, ash spreads. The wind is an open sore. I'm all roots and burn. Mom, I'm burning. Mom, I'm burning. Mom, I'm burning. This house is a heavy memory break. My teeth are full of hollow barking laughter. Mom, we forget and call it healing. We forgive everyone but ourselves, but we laugh loudest, don't we? Mom, I'm in love again. She makes me a forest fire. Mom, I met a man twice my age once and never told you. The pulse of his ring finger in my mouth made me a dead planet. Mom, which am I? Which one will I be with the lights off? Mom, my brother is dying and I exist. I exist. I am shouting at the empty still and always running. Mom, I took his hair in my fingers and said it would be okay. My tongue is still rattled in the taste of it. Mom, there's a lie in my fire and I'm still burning here. Mom, this house breathes like the neck of a swamp. My teeth still feel like that knife. His blood is still everywhere. Bleach only makes it whiter. Mom, he is learning to walk again, and I can't watch. I hate myself for it. Mom, I love you was never something we needed to say out loud. He said it over and over again in the blinding light. It's not understood anymore. Mom, the ache is too familiar. Mom, I can't do this. Mom, I can't. Mom, I can't. Mom, I can't. Mom, I can't. Mom, the grave is growing over still. Thank you. I'm gonna do two more. One's gonna be off my cell phone, and one will be memorized. Hey, new people, they came. I saw you. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's one more. Oh, shit! Look at how full this house gets when I start to read. Big draws in there. better getting evicted. Yeah. <laughs> How do I get to the new beer? Alright. So I decided once that I wanted to write more happy poems, because that's not a thing I do, as evidenced by my previous piece. Uh, and this was my only attempt at writing a happy poem before I realized that I didn't care. Uh, speaking of which, speaking of how aggressive and sad my writing is, I performed at UConn like a week ago and I got my favorite note I've ever gotten, which is a guy just came up to me and he was like, so did you want people to like your set? <laughs> 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 no, not particularly. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so this is called Shitty Love Poem. Your mouth tastes like how rain can taste sometimes when things are okay. I am only okay when wedged in the soft of you. My train is at 3.30, but I will bury myself in the skull of your bed until the streetlights come on like row after row of chipped teeth. I had a dream where I was the tin man and you were a twister in my trailer park. I want to call you a forest fire, a car crash. I want to kiss you like lightning cracks in a swimming pool. But words like love don't work on first dates or goodbyes, or whatever I am. But I can burn a hole in your pillow trying to carry the way you are breathing into my sleep, which if you ask me is kind of the same thing but softer. But I could smoke, and I could call you a smoke ring. I could fall asleep with a lit cigarette and wake up completely wrapped in you. Call me a romantic, call me a train wreck. Call me by your name, please call me something. Alright, and the next poem I do is going to be my last poem, and it also feels good to sexual assault. So once again, if you are uncomfortable with that, I really encourage you to take some stick. Um, but if you're not, feel free to stop. In the hallway between third period English and the cafeteria, there is a sign that reads, Remember. 
That girl is someone's sister. I wonder idly why she needs to be more than someone. My sister does not wish to identify as a rape victim. She is a survivor. Before walking to her car, she weaves her keys into her knuckles like a row of crooked teeth. The night is something that needs to be carved. She is always ready for the men who would treat her like the hollow of a drum. I will never know what this is like. No story will make me feel how the heat of that dark room thickened when you tried to catch your breath. I will never understand how kind you said his face was when he first said hello. Over 78% of sexual assaults are committed by someone the victim knew already. There is no other here. It's us doing this. I've had two friends convicted of sex crimes in the last year, and when I read the news, I didn't even feel surprised. Privilege is feeling guilt instead of fear. In the uncarved dark of a comedy club, Daniel Tosh asks how hilarious it would be if a female heckler was raped on her way home. The audience cackles red, there is no other here. My laughter, too, has been a validation. These men are not strangers. They are the same as those that line the block. My sister walks through red cackle in the drum of their voices, nice tits. You'd be prettier if you smiled. What are you, a fucking dyke? Answer, dyke, answer. The victim of the Steubenville rape case was harassed on social media for ruining the promising football careers of two young men. I hear the same drums echo when I read the news. Nice tits, pretty girl, pretty smile, answer. Awful short skirt for this neighborhood, better be careful. I wouldn't hurt you though, better be careful. The day after the Tosh rape joke controversy, comedians rush to his aid. My sister is expected to walk silently. America expects young girls to sacrifice their body for the future of their assailants. Young men in my high school are taught that a woman's worth is defined by her relationship to a man. The blood is on our hands. The blood is on our hands, our hands, our hands. How do you say it's going to be okay when it's not? How do I keep believing in anything when I cannot promise to keep you safe? Dear sister, I am obsessed with statistics. One in four women will be raped in their lifetime. My mother has three sisters. Thank you. Uh, I forgot to print books before this show, because that's what I do before like at least three quarters of my shows. But if you give me your email, uh, I'll probably send you a book for free. Or you can uh, give me money if you want. Give it for Evan Boyd Noel, everybody. Yeah.